Thank you, Melinda, for coming to chat to us about your experiences in the Body Love Academy. Because I know for a lot of people watching, it might sound like a big, big daunting thing to come and join in a program. So it's good to hear from people who've actually done the program. And I congratulate you for graduating. You've um, hopefully received your certificate in the mail. Yes. yes Great. Good. And, um, and for taking a chance on a brand new course, you know, it was committing a whole 12 month period. So thank you for all of that. No worries. It was great. Good. So can you think back to when you decided to do the Body Love Academy? What made you join? What made you want to do it? Um, I think I was looking at what I could do to reconnect with myself. And I believe in the universe sending you messages and um, you, it kept coming up like it just, and I wasn't, it, I wasn't even putting into the computer, you know, how to expand myself or anything. So it wasn't like, it, you know, had picked up on what I was looking, looking for. And, um, and so I just thought, look, what's a year to commit to myself? Like I surely I'm worthy to spend a year reconnecting and looking at me and finding who I am and, um, so yeah, it was just really about reconnecting and finding finding ways to kind of, I guess, feel better about who I was and what I was doing. And I felt a little bit lost, to be quite honest. You know, being a mum, being a wife, being a daughter, being you know a staff member at work, you kind of lose the whole you and that whole sense of really behind all of that there's there's you and who am I like you know take away all of those things and what's left yeah and you would already started studying though to be a life coach and yep. like do some other certifications so obviously you're already interested in doing something like that or were you doing that for the same reasons to sort of learn more about yourself and so I was doing that um a, a lot to you to, to use at work. So in my role as a manager, I really like to work with people and it, people fascinate me, including myself, why we do the things we do. And there's always a, a story behind people and why they do those things and where those behaviours came from and those thoughts and the things that influence them to be the way they are and perhaps shift if they can or not. So yeah, I, I had already, I was part way through my life coach um, certification and I just thought, well, oh, this is really good. It's kind of hitting the mark. But for me, it was about kind of just really hitting the mark for me. So I was doing something to kind of invest in so that I could use with other people. But then I thought, well, do you know, actually I need, I need my top, my cup topped up a bit. So I really just want to see what this is about and dig so that I can kind of open some things up a bit about me. And then like you talk about a lot of life experience when you're talking to people and you can really talk about where you've come from, that helps other people to feel comfortable to be able to go on that journey as well or discuss when the journey's not happening the way they thought it would happen or, or aren't getting what they thought they would get out of it. Yeah, I think, I think, being a coach, you need to have had some sort of coaching yourself. Otherwise, it's really hard to do that coaching role. And although I know you've been doing that as part of your, your job, you know, um, it's always good to take, like you've done, is take a year out for yourself because then you're showing the universe, I guess, that, you know, you value that. So you're going to find other people that value that who want to be your clients in the future too. That's yeah, cool. absolutely. Yeah, you're, you're, you're pretty much walking the talk. So you've what you're learning and what you're saying, you're also putting into practice in your own life. Yeah, exactly. So I know you're really busy because you've got all those hats that you wear. How did you find time to fit the academy into your busy lifestyle? So in the beginning, it was quite good. In the beginning, I actually had a bit of time off. So when it first started, I was kind of on holidays. So in holiday mode, so I could kind of get my head into it. Um, and then as time went on, it was like, oh, but I actually made the course fit around me not me fit around the course so on a on a Sunday I generally do a bit of a cook up for the week and so I would save a couple of the tutorials for that time and listen to them then um, I would do journaling in the morning uh, lunchtime at work and that was really good because 
I wasn't very good at taking lunch breaks. I was really good at telling the staff and the team to take <laughs> lunch breaks, <laughs> but I wasn't good at it. So this made me take more time for myself. So it made me do, you know, really invest in what it was that I was doing. Um, kids at the skate park, I would go for a walk and I would um, be jotting some things down on post-it notes because I love post-it notes. And then I'd come back and kind of put it all together in the assessment format and do it that way. So when we tell ourselves we don't have time, we don't have time. We fill it with stupid stuff like social media. So I didn't look at social media and things like that as much. I really invested my time wisely which then made me feel really good because I had actually taken the time out to spend on something that was worth what worthwhile where I would have previously sat and looked at some Pinterest or something on Facebook and then gone oh god what did I do with that hour or what do you, I could have done done blah 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 so yeah when you start looking at how you use your time during the day or you know just that little 15 minutes in the morning before everybody else wakes up getting up and doing that the meditation or some journaling or something like that um or your reflection pages then you you can fit it in it's just about changing the way you think about what you can fit in your day yeah absolutely i agree um so for you what would have been one of the one or more of the highlights of the program um so one of the highlights i think was definitely learning about so the intention so and I had done this a while ago but it was just you know I don't know you just get into this rut of life and you you know you, you don't set your intent for your day as well as what you could do and really kind of um working on what it was that I wanted to get out of my day um the journaling that was just reconnecting and I've done something what's called morning pages where you just go blah, 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 on a page and it's just getting that rant out of your head so you get a clear head in the morning um but this also kind of really when you write things on paper you tend to commit to them more or and invest in it so the journaling was big for me and i really love kind of creating and doing things like that so it also gave me that space i went and bought a lovely book and bought some lovely pens and stuff and then I'd start doing little doodles in the corner and then all of a sudden there'd be lots more little creations as I kind of went through, like I'd leave one side blank to do little pictures and creations and then kind of the writing. So it evolved into this creative um, kind of space and outlet for me. It wasn't just the words. And then I'd see lovely pictures or little postcard things while I was out and I'd grab them and I'd put them in the journal too because that kind of reflected how I was feeling at that time. And so the more things I'd gather and collect, the more I was taking in and absorbing and then I'd like kind of look back through like I did the other day and go, well, maybe I wasn't feeling that good that week because I didn't have that much more to put in. And that was okay too. But so I didn't, and I didn't do it every day. It was only when I felt I wanted to. So um and and not not pushing if there was nothing there I didn't do anything it, it wasn't about having to sit there and think of something and write it down so um that was really good and the the allowing versus the achieving for me was really good so talking about um accepting things the way they are and um that they might be there just for a reason and don't push things like you know accept it the way it is and then potentially there's more chance of things changing but the more you push to get a change out of something that's not going to occur um and the more effort you put in that way and it's a struggle you might just allowing things to happen the way they do you end up coming out where you want to be anyway with less energy and less stress and less input and stuff like that so yeah um and then of course the biggest one was the ritual so I've always done ritual, um, but it was just bringing it in a little bit larger and helping me work on what aspect of my business I was really going to concentrate on. Yeah, fantastic. And then over the period of the 12 months, were there any kind of low lights that were, you know, things that were hard to get through or? Yeah, moments? so I think that sometimes the reflections were really hard. So, um, you know, as you know, I, I've, I've, kind of have these uh moments of feeling quite anxious and some you know anxiety happens in my life and so it was just about 
really setting a clear intent with myself and and I was saying before about not having to do something every day whereas I was like I've got to get something down every day and then I started thinking hang on Melinda you're an adult this is adult learning no you don't so at, in the beginning it was really like oh my god I've got nothing to say I've got nothing in my head I I must be the only person in the group that's not got something to say um and so that was a little bit confronting for me and the, the timeline I actually found it brought up a lot of things so the timeline brought up that whole that feeling of you know that body image of being too skinny in school and always having people say do you eat are you bulimic are you anorexic what's wrong with you so that was something that I thought, oh, God, I've dealt with that before. But then it came up and I thought, I obviously haven't because I don't feel okay with this. So mm. um, that brought up some stuff. But that it was good because it, it made me realise something that I thought I had dealt with, I really kind of didn't. I maybe unpicked the onion a little bit but didn't kind of open that onion up to become a lotus flower. So, yeah. 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 So, And I think... That's healing, isn't it? I mean, we, yep. we we hurt before we heal kind of thing, but it's a good sign that you are healing if it hurts. It's like when, yeah. you, when your cut starts itching because it's actually healing. Yeah. So yep. um, I know that you've created the video that we've seen previously about rituals, but tell us a bit more about how, how you plan to bring the body love message to the world. The yeah, so... I've been doing it a, a, a bit this year with the, the staff that I work with anyway and just working on, like a lot of people will eat and you say, are you enjoying what you're eating? And some, some people are just eating and not even consciously taking in the food and or going, oh, I shouldn't really eat it. So there's this guilt with what they're eating. So we've been doing some intentful eating really. So like, you know, I'm taking this food and it's beautiful and it's going to nourish my body or even if it's chocolate and it's in a time of when we're doing our budgeting at work, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm taking this chocolate in and it's going to make me feel lovely on the inside. And I love it when I eat chocolate because it brings out blah, blah, blah. So not, yeah, not punishing ourselves when we put something in our mouth because we know we want it, but, but always comes along. So it's just some of that. And also that, um, the meditation. So being able to take a lunch break, do some meditation, go for a walk. So my thing is if I do it, then people are going to see what difference it's made for me and then want to do that for themselves. So, um, that's kind of as, how I'm wanting it to kind of be spread, but as well with like, I've got boys. So for me, um, to show my boys that I'm not, you know, I don't, I'm not worried about, you know, growing older. That's just life. And I don't need to, you know, wear makeup or pretend I'm something that I'm not feeling comfortable in who I am, I think is important for them because then they can see that women, women are women doesn't matter what their size or what they look like you're a woman and it's not about the exterior because some people can be so beautiful but not nice people so um just working with them on you know loving themselves being happy with who they are not needing to be like everybody else because everybody else might seem like they're happy but really they're they're possibly not um so yeah just lots of different elements where i'm kind of working with people myself individuals and kind of spreading that word of of what it means to to love yourself love your body have have patience with yourself and not not push yourself to the limit where you think you're not good enough for anything really and as you get older i don't know as i've gotten older i've just tend to go on i don't have the energy to deal with that stuff so I really need to be comfortable with who I am to be able to just move through life. I'm not at high school anymore. I'm not in that space where, you know, people judge me or whatever. And, and as I tell my boys, you know, you can be who you want to be without needing other people's approval. As long as you feel comfortable and you're happy with what you're doing, then that's, you've won. You've absolutely yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I, lo- I love what you've just explained because you're, um, you're the person that's inspired me to bring the Body Love Academy light to the world. So that's the um, Body Love Academy without doing the business stuff. Um, so some people might not want to do the whole business thing. And what you've just described is a way that, pe- you know, many ways that people can do the Body Love Academy without the business stuff, but still help cha- make change in the world by spreading it in their workplace or their friendships or their children and all those different ways. So there's, there's many ways that um, there's many benefits from doing the course. It's never just yourself. It's always the yeah. people that you are around as well. So thanks for that reminder. That was great. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, it, and it, and when you start working on yourself, you, you're amazed at how many more people are drawn to you anyway. Like you just, you start to, like you're radiating some kind of different energy and so it brings people to you and you, you don't even try, but it's just the fact that you, yeah, you're, you're radiating, you're kind of vibrating on a different level because you are confident in who you are and you're feeling quite, very different in the world and that's how I feel very different and and more confident in the world because I've done that work on myself to go oh do you know what I really really do love myself I really do love that I was able to you know be here feel confident move from that space of going oh this is icky to talk you know think about this stuff again to where I am today and go you know what those icky things uh, still a little bit icky, but the more I talk about them and the more I move into a space of feeling comfortable, the more true I'm going to be to myself and other people around me um, and and just be able to kind of talk about anything without, you know, people thinking, oh, you know, and, and some people possibly do think, well, she's skinny. What has she got to worry about? But it's it, everybody's got something about themselves, women especially Mm -hmm. although having two boys I know it's boys as well that they're always worried about what other people will think but I think the more confident we feel within ourselves the less you worry about what other people are going to think yeah absolutely that's a beautiful note to finish on Melinda thank you so much for telling us about your experience I really appreciate it no worries thank you for uh coming up with the course it's a fantastic thing definitely something that I really think um teenagers women of any age it definitely is something to to take on board and invest in yourself because it is yourself that you're investing in really yeah thank you no worries thanks emma